Okay. So in the in this paper of yours, you talk about how it's unusual to discover mm -hmm. new coded genes yeah. evolving from non-coded mm -hmm. DNA. Um, what did you mean by that? Well, if you think about a gene, um, it's actually quite a complicated thing. You've got this promoter regulatory sequences at the beginning. If it contains introns, those have to be spliced out correctly, and there are kind of sequence signals in order that, for that to happen correctly. And if these things aren't working properly, your gene is not going to work properly. So it's a relatively complicated thing. And so the easiest way of getting a new gene, once you already have a gene, the easiest way of getting a new gene is by copying an existing gene and modifying it. Yep. And in fact, this is what we see in evolution. We see that the most common way of getting a new gene is by duplication and modification. And um, this happens slowly but continuously over time. And so it was essentially believed that... Um, you know, we couldn't get new genes from scratch anymore. It must have happened way at the origin of time, the origin of, uh, so let's say, sorry, the origin of uh, life, but... Yeah. Um, um, but then but, we've but, had four billion years Yeah, to when, when it's been therefore. essentially too difficult to make them from scratch, that it was going to be an insignificant process. And in fact, there are plenty of people who've said, you know, that evolution doesn't create, it just tinkers. Yeah. And... Um, but so it was just a few years ago that the first ever example of this that I know about was found in um, Drosophila, where they found good evidence that a new gene was created from non-coding DNA. And so um, it's really, like if you talk about all the examples that are known about, um, there's maybe 11 genes like this in fly, uh, one gene in in one gene in yeast, and that's all that it was before our work came out. And, and so um, it was really an unusual and not a very common thing, and many people aren't even studying it because they don't expect it to and especially happen. So you talk in your paper about how the, there are these disablers mm -hmm. which cause the, the, these sequences to not be able to encode yeah. genes in... Um, in chimpanzee, yes, but uh, yes. they can in, in humans. So can you explain a bit more about what you mean yeah. by a disabler? Then? Well, the disablers in this case are going to be essentially stop codons or other kinds of mutations that cause a stop codon downstream. So if you if you insert or delete, so an indel of any nucleotides that aren't a multiple of three, they change everything downstream. So even if it doesn't create a stop codon right there, it might create a stop codon five codons later. And so when you've got all these stop codons, you can say, well, this isn't a protein because it's got an, the, the potential protein is own, it's so short, it's, it's implausible and kind of ridiculous. And so the disablers... Okay, and so then you have these three novel genes which you've identified. So what do you think that they mm, actually I wish do? I knew. <laughs> um, so we'd love to say, of course, that there's something really important in what makes us human. And this is the reason why people get excited about it, because you know it's interesting to find things that are human-specific in case they might be involved in human-specific traits. But the truth is we really don't know at this point. Um, so what sort of work are you doing to try to find out well, that they really exist yeah, and what so, they do. Well, what you'd normally do as a geneticist is you'd look at that gene in your model organism. Yep. But uh, these genes only exist in human. And for not some a very reason, good model organism. Yeah, for some reason we're not allowed to do experiments. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure you can find somebody willing. But, uh, <laughs> um, but so what we can do, though, is we can do experiments on cell lines. So these would be like particular tissue cells, uh, tissue so cell lines. So isolated cells yes. from a, a human. Yeah. And so these are limited in scope because, of course, human is a complex multicellular organism. Organism, and some phenotypes will only be visible on this scale. You might not see something going on in a, in a cell or a few, a few cells, but maybe it's, it's, a, it's a process that is kind of more uh, on a grand a scale. In your, and especially if it was affecting something like speech or... You know, these kind of things you're never going to notice in, in a, some liver cells. So, but, but we, so 